Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Timothy Fu, Chair of the Board of Trustees for the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. On behalf of the Board, uh, thank you all for being here on this joyful day to help us celebrate breaking ground for the Uta and William K. Bose Jr. Center for Performing Arts. The Bose Center will provide us a home for our students and for visiting artists state-of-the-art teaching and learning spaces and breathtaking performance venues where conservatory musicians and artists and also artists from our neighboring institutions will share the music with the community. When I joined the board many years ago, we knew the conservatory belongs with the other performing arts at the, at the Civic Center and we knew we must provide housing for our students. So we succeeded in moving to the Civic Center in 2006. And now we're breaking ground for the new student residence hall. So I'm, today I, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of how all of us have come together to make the future possible. And I want to express my deepest thanks to the supporters of this project whose inspiring leadership and generosity have set us up for a successful second century of leading music education through innovation, inclusion, and a culture of achievement, excellence, and collaboration. Now I have the pleasure and the honor to in introduce our mayor, the mayor of San Francisco, London Breed. Thank you, everyone. What a beautiful day to break ground on hundreds of units of new housing for artists. This is exactly what I love doing as mayor. Some of you may know that I used to serve as the executive director of an arts organization, the African American Art and Culture Complex. I was there for 10 years. It's not very far from here. But we had incredible working relationships with the surrounding arts community here, where you have the symphony, the opera, SF Jazz. This place has become a hub for artists everywhere. And now that the San Francisco Conservatory of Music has decided to take it even a step further, to come up with this innovative plan to produce 420 units of housing for their students, it's absolutely amazing. And we should all be proud of what this project would do for housing in the city and county of San Francisco. But also equally important, the 27 residents who were once housed here were not only housed very close to this particular development as it's under construction, at the same rents they were paying, they will also be moved back into this building when it's built at the same rents that they have been paying through their rent control. And here's the thing, 27 people are not being displaced as a result of this project. We are adding more units, we're not displacing anyone, and the reason why this is so incredible for the environment, it is in with walking distance of the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. The I can't be more proud. We have to do more to build more housing in San Francisco. We have to think about the fact that this is an innovative place. People want to live here. They want to work here. They want to grow here. They want to thrive here. But what also makes San Francisco incredibly a great place for all of us, it's the arts. It's the music. It's the entertainment. It's all of the things that people come here to enjoy. And how are we going to continue to grow if we don't have opportunities that exist for them, if we don't provide housing that they can afford, if we don't open the doors of opportunity to our artists who we know are constantly being displaced out of San Francisco. Today is a great day. It's a great day for San Francisco. It's a great day for the arts community. And I am so looking forward to all the work that we're gonna continue to do to revitalize the Civic Center area. Yesterday, I looked out the window from my office in City Hall. 
I saw kids playing in the park. I saw people standing in line at the new buy right we just opened two days ago. I saw folks doing Zumba. I saw the park patrol police talking to folks and just hanging out. It was amazing when you activate a space, when you focus on making sure that we're bringing things to this area and we're taking care of the community, everyone can enjoy it. And this is a project that is gonna benefit this area and hopefully help us to grow and thrive and create more places like this that provide more housing for each and every one of us. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you so much for your support and your commitment to the arts. And, and we really are very honored to have you uh, take time from your busy schedule today to be with us. So, um, and, and now I have the, uh, the pleasure of introducing the person who has designed this building, uh, marvelous facility for all of us, but the best design architect in the city of San Francisco, Mark Cavaniero. Thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you, Mary Bree. It was really great to hear your uh, thoughts on this. It's humbling to be here. It's exciting. We've been working on this for years. To see it actually become a building coming out of the ground is uh, every architect's dream. We talk a lot about innovation as we talked about this project, and I think the word of innovation is really singular for this building and the vision that Tim and David and the board have had in that we're building not just a building, but a whole organism for arts and music. The students will be living here, practicing here, performing here. Those performances will be shared with the public. They'll be highly transparent, offering a whole snapshot into their world when you're walking or driving up Van Ness or Hayes. And it'll offer a great deal to the larger community as well as making a community within this. So it's not just about education. It's about a whole San Francisco community coming together in one new building. And for an architect, it can't get much more exciting. So thank you for sharing this with us, and thank you for letting me be part of this, David, Tim, and the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I, I, I can't wait to see this building coming up. And uh, now I have the pleasure to introduce uh, my good friend and uh, co-conspirator, uh, president of the Conservatory of Music, Mr. David Stoll. Okay, I can say this now. I can't believe we're standing here. No, really. I've worked on some projects in my lifetime that had to have an incredible reach. If you want to try and reach beyond your grasp, uh, this project is a tale of doing exactly that. But I have to tell you, it's because of so many of the people are sitting here and so many people are not here today that this happened. Uh, Mayor Breed and uh, also Supervisor Kim, I can't say enough about these two individuals uh, nothing goes through City Hall this fast, really, I, at least in my experience. And the reason this happened is because we had great advocates in the city. Uh, there was a real belief in this project from the beginning. Uh, it was something that some people saw the benefit of it for the community, and it happened at an extraordinary rate. But before I talk a bit more of the building, I do really want to thank some people who are really important in making this happen. And probably one of the most important people who made this happen that you may not realize, this is my wife, Jessica Downs. And she's out here somewhere. Jessica, can you raise your hand? Honey, thank you. Because I want to say uh, the amount of time it takes to do this kind of work requires um, somebody who is your partner and your friend and also believes in it. And uh, Jess did from the very beginning. Uh, I also want to say that we have, in my view, the top team of any nonprofit in San Francisco. We have a top team at San Francisco Symphony and at the Opera, my colleagues, but as I represent the conservatory, I want to say I can't tell you how fabulous our team is. The development crew, the senior staff, our CFO, Catherine, Katie Nicely. Can all of you raise your hands for a minute? Everyone here from the C SFCM staff, raise your hands, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great group, and we would not have gotten it done without them. Uh, this, this started in a couple interesting ways. Uh, Mark Cavaniero, uh, who uh, you know, actually accepted my offer for coffee, I said, Mark, 
we're going to do this project. We had no money, no sight, you know, really nothing. And uh, Mark started on his own sketching what it would look like to build a facility like this. Uh, Mark brought on his team, David Kwan, David Bibliowitz. Uh, we also have Katie Hawkins here. There's a great crew at Cavaniero. And uh, these folks worked tirelessly. And probably one of the most complex builds there is. This building is, of course, a residence hall for students. It's 27 replacement units of housing. It is two spectacular performance halls, a recording studio, teaching space, a restaurant. Yes, sitting right here. And if you can imagine the architectural constraints on doing things like sweeping glass on the west and north walls that also create a beautiful acoustical space. But the fact is these spaces will be iconic. Uh, the penthouse recital hall looking at City Hall, the invitation of the lower street level recital hall all glass, and the reality is is 90% of the concerts in those spaces are free to the public. This is a great way to bring music in and in that building 99% of the students are on financial aid and the 27 units are rent stabilized and every dollar it generates goes back to support scholarships for future students. And I think we're gonna give a, a round of applause for that because that was an incredible thing. Uh, ECB, uh, our, our project managers, John Kloss and Suzanne Brown, and I know Jim Quill, can you guys raise your hand please, wherever you are in the audience out there. These guys did an extraordinary job I, I can't say enough about how many hurdles they crossed for us. They're not here today, but the law firm uh, Koblenz, Pam Duffy and Paul Levin did amazing work. On our crew, Trudy Loskoff, Karen Johnson, I saw Karen here, Karen Tiedemann, Larry Bodner, uh, Ann Topier. There were so many folks working at the city level who also provided this, this great work. Uh, and the fact is, is, it was the team that made it happen. And I said to our CFO this morning that at every point in this project, there was somebody on the team that made an extraordinary event happen. Otherwise, the entire thing would have stopped. That's how much this was a, a combined project. But ladies and gentlemen, we don't do projects like this without people who believe and actually put substantial resources behind it. And I can't tell you how fortunate we are in San Francisco, because when you look to Davies Hall, the opera, the conservatory, to the ballet, to SF Jazz, to the museums, to the incredible cultural life that we enjoy here. It is because actually not as many as you think, but actually a very small handful of people for generations have made those things happen for this city and are making this building happen right now. Uh, not here uh, are Richard Blum and Senator Feinstein, Carol Buck, George and Camilla Smith, all who made such substantial financial events. Can we give them a round of applause, please, for their leadership on that? Uh, the next phase of this, we have a great architect. We have lots of fundraising, but as you might imagine, uh, financing makes it all happen. And uh, this was a tricky project to finance. Hey, we're this conservatory of 400 students and we want to build a $190 million building on Van Ness. Will you loan us some money? Now think about that just for a second. Those in the finance industry. Um, this happened because Jim Herbert decided it was going to happen. And Jim, on behalf of this board and myself, I can't thank you enough and the FRB team. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I'm going to just announce to the public, but I, Jim's like, don't tell them the numbers, but it's $75 million fixed at 3.9% over 30 years on the loan for this building, and that's because Jim decided it was a priority to build a building and put the entire effort. Jim, thank you. Jim and Cecilia Bella, I just want to thank you for that. It was incredible. Uh, early folks who were in. Carol and Lyman Casey. Carol's been a board member for years. Uh, Carol's family has been supporting the arts in this city in incalculable ways and with incredible affection and a tremendous investment. And the first, Carol was one of the first people to walk into my office when we were talking about this and said, this needs to happen. And she began with an investment and continued the investment until we got on with her. So Carol, I want to thank you so much for what you've done for us. Thank you. Um, along the way, every project uh, has a patron saint, actually. And uh, the fact is, is I will talk about this a bit more today, but um, we lost Bill Bowes um, early on in this. And I do believe he's here with us today, but we lost him early on. And, and the fact is, when that happens, um, it leaves kind of a vacuum in leadership. And um, Barney Osher stepped in and actually made this thing happen. I need, you need to know that. He not only invested substantially in this, but was the advocacy in the city and his belief in the project. And Barney and Barbara have been great friends. And uh, I can't tell you what it meant 
to this being accomplished. And so that brings us down to the finish line. We were within range of getting this done. Jim was prepared to give us a loan, but frankly, we were short. And we needed a big gift and a bridge that was crossed. And a colleague and a friend of mine who was a wonderful composer. But uh, I have to tell you, you see his name because of the enormous amount of quiet giving does. And it was Gordon Getty. And Gordon stepped in and absolutely made it happen and completed this project and took us across the finish line. And that is how we got there. And Gordon, I can't thank you enough. But I want to say that uh, none of this, none of this would have happened if it weren't for Bill. Bill, um, Bill Bowes, uh, before there was property, even the opportunity to buy property, before there was a design, before there was anything, it was me on my second meeting with Bill at the Pacific Union Club saying, Bill, we need to do this. And he was sitting there very quietly. And those of you who know Bill realize that the first time you're with him, it's a little unnerving because he almost says nothing to you, but he gazes at you with these eyes. And you're just, it just sort of opens you up like a book. And he was quiet and he said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Bill believed in the necessity of housing for students from the moment uh, the Civic Center project was arrived on Oak Street. Um, he has given so generously to so many projects, students, the environment, arts, education. He has advanced so many companies and careers throughout his lifetime. And um, he really resisted anything being named for him. And the fact is, the fact that this building will be named uh, for William K. Bose and Uta Bose uh, is extraordinary, because I believe it will have a great soul. And perhaps one of the most wonderful things it did do is it also led me to get to know Uta. And I will talk a bit more about that later at lunch today. But uh, the people we have in the city who believe in this kind of work are not to be found in many places in the world. They just aren't. And uh, that brings me to the final folks uh, I really want to thank. Uh, we wouldn't have gotten here, and I wouldn't have gotten here if it weren't for our board chair, Tim Fu. I can't. And his amazing wife, Virginia. Virginia, thank you for being here, by the way. <laughs> uh, I want all of our board members here, can you raise your hands for a second? We have multiple seven-figure donors out there in the audience. I'm not even listing today. And um, it's the greatest board I've ever worked for in my career. Uh, I've never seen a board this cohesive, this supportive, that has this much belief in what we're doing. And it has made it a privilege to do this work. Uh, it is this community that made it happen. It's like a, a dream come true for this conservatory. But I think it's a dream come true for all of us. And so I, I can't say more than thank you, but I wish that I could. Because the gratitude runs down to my very bones. And uh, it's been a privilege to get to know so many people who are standing here because it's inspired me to be, frankly, a better person. So I, I can only tell you that we've crossed over um, $109 million in fundraising for this project. But there's still time, folks, to invest. So any of you who are now inspired to be involved, please let me know. Um, so finally, let's get to the reason we're doing this. Uh, students, can you raise your hand out there? I'm going to give you a round of applause. Um, if there's ever a moment when we were wondering, can we get this done, when you spend time in our building and with our students, you know you want to get it done. These kids come from all over the world. They're not kids, but I suppose we think of them that way sometimes. They're amazing students and young artists who are going to go out, and they will change the world. And they do change the world, and they have changed the world for 100 years. And the fact now that we can put a roof over their head and make it affordable is an extraordinary thing. As I said, 99% are on financial aid, and this is because they come from across the globe with talent, but not always resources. And so to that end, it is my honor and privilege to introduce, actually, the chair of our student council. Uh, she is a student, a master's student in voice studying in the studio of Cesar Yoa, who is also here. And that is Mia Skolnick. Mia, please join me at the podium. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mia Skolnick, and I'm a second year master's student in vocal performance here at the conservatory. SFCM is a truly wonderful and special place, and I'm so proud to be a student here. 
I applied for and was accepted to several schools and conservatories around the country, but I couldn't be happier that I came here to SFCM. I chose to come to the city of San Francisco and SFCM because of its diversity, its values, its beauty, and the feeling I got when I came here. There was a welcoming atmosphere at the conservatory that let me know right away I was at home. Two years ago, I was living in Portland, Oregon, where I grew up, working a regular office job, singing on the side. I had gotten my undergraduate degree in music, but I had drifted away from my passion. One day, I had a realization that life is too short not to do what makes me happy. So I decided to pursue music seriously again, and that is what led me here to San Francisco and to the conservatory. SFCM is providing me with incredibly important skills and tools to become a professional musician out in the world. The caliber of excellence we have here at SFCM is simply unmatched, and I wouldn't be getting this kind of education anywhere else. The Bose Center will enhance these special aspects of SFCM for generations of students to come. The Bose Center will expand our already dynamic musical community as our campus more than doubles in size providing even more state-of-the-art resources and opportunities for students. The Bose Center will mean so many wonderful things for our future. Its proximity to the incredible arts partners in the Civic Center area, beautiful new spaces for collaboration among students, faculty, and visiting artists, and most importantly, it means that SFCM can reach and inspire even more of the musicians of the future. On behalf of all my fellow students, Thank you to everyone who has made this project possible. And now, let's break ground.